Okay, so here we're going to start talking about our organized counting, but instead of doing permutations, we're going to look at something called combinations. And combinations are just the same thing as permutations, just without order. We don't put things in a particular position. Okay, so this is instead of creating, you know, choosing people to go in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or lane one, lane two, lane three, lane four, lane five. Instead, you just choose a group. Okay, so you're choosing groups. And those groups, everybody in that group has an equal sort of standing. The one doesn't have a position compared to another one compared to another one, so you can't tell the difference. So another way to think about it is like a corral or like a bag full, okay, or a sack full. And that's the idea here, okay? So, so when you're doing organized counting and you're taking things and putting them in positions, and their position is relevant and important, then, then you have a permutation. When you have a combination, it's just choosing things. So it's doing the first half, but not doing the second half. It's not choosing and then putting in order, it's just choosing. Okay, so if I choose A, B, C, D, and E from the alphabet, okay, then, you know, there's 26 letters that I can choose from the alphabet, and I choose four letters, okay? But I don't put them into a word. I just have a sack of letters, okay, that I put in, I don't know, into a corral, or I just put in a small area or something like that. Okay, so keeping that idea in mind, um, uh, in this case, uh, we focus on permutations, arrangements of n elements in r positions, situations in which the order or position is important. Okay, if you have ten elements and you place them in four positions, you're actually doing two things. Okay, so if I have ten things and I'm putting them in four spots, I'm doing two things. First of all, you're choosing four people out of the ten and then you're placing them in order. So choosing gives you variability because of course there's six people that you don't choose and then and then putting them in order gives you very it gives you variability too. So you have create a group and then you choose them. You just sort of, and then you order them, but then you, you you kind of do it at the same time, and that's really what a permutation is. Okay? So we don't see it as this um, to be positioning and choosing at the same time. However, the variability or number of possibilities that are created arise from choosing and from positioning. Okay? So we're gonna parallel the two of them or, or compare the two of them. Consider there are four students and I'm just going to label you A, B, C, D rather than writing out names. How many different, how many ways can I pick a president and then a vice president? Okay, so I have four elements and I have two positions. Now what I'm doing is I'm choosing two from A, B, C, D and then I am positioning them in president and vice president. Okay, so as a result of that, those four elements in two positions, it's a fairly easy scenario. Now I'm going to map the whole thing out as well. Okay, but for the number of outcomes, okay, there's the president and there's the vice president. So we would go four and three. Okay, another thing, of course, that we can do to solve this problem, although we don't want to do it very often, in 12, uh, is to actually list them out. So we can have A, B, we can have A, C, first position is president, second position is vice president. So A, B, A, C, and A, D. We can have B, A, B, C, and B, D. And then we can have C, A, C, B, C, D. And then we can have D, A, D, B, and then D, C. So those are my 12 outcomes, okay, that are possible, all right? And again, president and vice president means that I'm, I'm positioning. Okay, I'm, I'm providing positions. Now, uh, same thing, uh, how many ways can I pick a group of two students? Well, this is just four elements, okay, the same elements, four students to choose from, and I want to pick a group of two. Okay, and the word that we tend to use the most often is choose. I'm choosing two or a group of two. Okay, so the number of ways in which I could do that, I'm not going to show you how to do that yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list all the possibilities, and you'll see how they're different from each other, and then I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so first of all, I can pick A, B, A and B in a group. Now, there's no positioning to it, it's just A and B in a group. Okay, I can pick A and C in a group, and I can pick A and D in a group. Okay, there's no first and second. Okay, so next who I pick is B, C. Now the reason why I pick BC is I can't pick BA because BA is already the two people in the group. So, so usually if you look up here, I have BA, okay? But BA and AB are the same thing because it's just two people in the group. So if I pick BA and AB, there's no positioning. There's no first and second. There's no president and vice president. So BA and AB, these are exactly the same thing when position is not important. It's just a group, 
There are two people standing in a corner. And as a result of that, A and B or B and A doesn't make a difference, okay, when you're choosing a group and you define it as a group. So B and C together, that's a group. And B and D together, that's a group I haven't mentioned yet. All the groups I mentioned here involve A. These are all the groups that involve B, except for BA, because BA has already been listed. For C, I can't list CA because there it is there. I can't list CB because there it is there. So what I list out of these three is just CD. And then for D, I can't list any of these because DA is right here. Uh, DB is right here. And then DC is right here. So what I actually get is I get one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's the answer, six. Now, how does that work? Well, again, it's four P four, but what I do, okay, is I remove the variability of positioning, two factorial position, okay? And if I remove the two factorial, remember we, when we remove positioning, okay, we remove the number of things that we're positioning, okay, factorial, we divide it out. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. We're removing the positioning, A and B. Or sorry, not A and B, we're president and vice president. We're removing the positioning. So that's why we get six. Now this is actually something that we call a combination. So if you look at the formula for a permutation, okay, using our example up here, it's going to be 4 factorial all over 4 minus 2 factorial, which is 4 factorial over 2 factorial, which is 12. Okay, which of course works out the way that it does. Okay, If we were to do uh, this new thing that we call a combination, and we use a C for it, okay, it's also nice to use the word choose because choose also begins with a C. So it's a nice way for you to do it. So a lot of people call it N choose R when they, when they write it out. So we still have N. We have four elements, so four factorial, divided by four minus two factorial, and then two factorial. So then we have four factorial all over two factorial, Okay, that is the same thing as NPR. So that NPR is this NPR, that four choose four. But then we also divide by two factorial as well. And that's that two factorial that we divide by. To remove the variability that we would get if we were to put them in positions, but we don't put them in positions. Now the nice thing is, is there's a button on your calculator for this, okay? For mine, it's right here, N choose R. And you actually use it a lot more often than you use NPR. Okay, there's my N factorial, N choose R. And then, and then NPR factorial. Again, they're all in the second function. For some people, they have different applications and there's different possibilities depending on your calculator. Okay. And if I wanted to show you how to do, uh, in this case, 4P4 divided by 2 factorial, we actually write as 4 choose 2. Okay. So this would be 4 choose 2. So if I take that example and I go 4 and then I do my choose 1, there's a C for the choose, and then I do the two. Okay, so it's four, choose two, it's six. Okay, so it already does it for me. So you don't necessarily have to know where it all comes from, but just to realize that what we're doing in a combination is we're just doing a permutation and we're removing positioning. That's all we're doing. But you don't have to, to do it. You don't have to go from the permutation all the time. You can just use the choose when you're choosing, and you can just use the P when you're doing permutations. Okay, and that's the idea. Okay, so when we're grouping things, but we're not grouping them any position or any order, okay, we're picking teams you know, like in phys ed class and not putting them in positions on the volleyball court, then, you know, the, the choosing process or the combina is a combination, okay, and you're a team, and of course, you're going to rotate all over the court and play around, or if you're playing basketball, it's just freestyle basketball in phys ed class, there's no point guard, and there's no, there's no forwards and center, and so on and so forth, so there's no positioning, as a result, really, phys ed class is more of a class of combinations, and then if you actually get into a team where you have positioning and stuff, then you would have permutations, and that's, so that's the idea. Okay, so let's look further at some examples of this. Okay, I go through the whole calculus of this. 11 racers, and we need three from that race to move on to the final race. So determining the number of ways in which first, second, and third place can happen, first, second, and third are differences. So three people are going to finish in the top three, but first, second, and third place make each one of those things different from each other. So here we use a permutation because there is positioning. Positioning, Permutation, also P in position is really nice, okay? Okay, P, position, permutation, it tells you what to do. If we were to ignore the first, second, and third place and then just see the top three, okay, 
Uh, they do this in, in, in races when they have like a lot of racers, like in the Olympics and the 100 meter dash, they don't just run one race. They run what, it, what are called heats, right? And they take the top three times from each heat. And so you just have to win your heat and then you move on to the big race, right? Where everybody races in that scenario. So again, it's 11 P3. We treat it like a permutation and we remove the variability or we just call it 11 choose three. So when we're choosing a top three, where first, second, and third, it doesn't matter. They're just the top three. The w number of combinations or the number of ways in which racers could finish out of 11 people competing, okay, it's going to be 11, uh, 11 choose three. 11 elements, three choices, or three a combination of three elements. Okay, so let's let's try this scenario here. Okay. All right. So there are 23 students in the class. How many ways can I pick four helpers? Well, there's 23 elements. Okay. And then I'm picking four. So there's four choices. Or you could say choose four, or you could say group of four. Now I can't go like this to figure out my number and I want to map it out. I can't go one, two, three, four, right? Because that's a position. I can't do positioning. Or if I do positioning, I have to continuously eliminate by dividing by that amount. So instead of using that problem solving strategy where we denote positions, what I do is I put groups and subgroups. Okay, so there's 23 people that I'm choosing from, and this is like the classroom, and then I'm putting them in a corner, okay, or if there's 23 chocolate bars, I'm putting them into the bag that I do, that I put them into when I buy them at the convenience store or at the grocery store or whatever it may be. So that's what it looks like when I map it out. I have 23 elements and I'm choosing a sub small little group, okay, of four helpers. So I just write this as 23 choose four. You don't need to go back to the permutation, pretend it's a permutation and remove the variability. Unless of course you want to, I suppose you can. But when we're gonna start doing this and doing more and more complex scenarios, it's gonna become a bit more of a difficulty. Okay, so it's 23 choose four. Okay, and we can of course figure out how to work that on our calculator, so 23. Call up your choose function, you put a 4, and it's 8855. Five. Okay, so there's 8,855 8, different ways to choose four helpers from 23 students. Okay, and again, we're going to have some good copy versions of this, so don't worry too much about that. Okay, all right, so that's that. All right, now here's what we're going to do, and this is some of the power that's involved in all of this. Okay, here's another scenario, kind of the same idea. We have 24 students in the class, and we have 16 computers that they can use in the computer lab. How many ways can I pick four helpers? So like a group of four, okay, I don't know, to work together in an assignment or something like that, and three computers, okay? So four helpers and three computers. So how do I do that? Well, I, I kind of have two groups that I choose from. Okay, so I've got sort of this scenario here where I've got 24 students, right? And I've got 16 computers, okay? And then what I wanna do is I wanna put them in a group. So for the 24 students that I have, I'm gonna choose four. Now, how do I write that? Well, for my students, it's gonna be 24 choose four, simple. Okay, 24 choose four. So I've got 24 elements and four choices, or a group of four. I've also got 16 elements, that's the computers. Okay, so here I'm gonna choose my computers. Okay, and so it's gonna be 16 computers to choose from, and then I'm going to grab three of them. Okay, so I'm gonna choose three of them. So there's gonna be three of them going into that computer student grouping that I have here. Okay, and as a result of that, I'm choosing students and then I'm choosing computers to be a group of you know students and computers that they can use, that they're assigned to. So because I'm choosing students and computers, what do I use, fundamental counting principle? Students and computers, I multiply. Okay, and it's nice to do that because we're really illustrating the fundamental counting principle, but also realizing that we can break it up into two things. We can choose the students, we can choose the computers, and then we can sort of compile them together. 
okay? And the reason why I multiply those, of course, is if I choose students A, B, C, and D, and I choose student, uh, computers one, two, and three, that's one group. But all I have to do is choose, comp choose students A, B, C, and D, and choose computers one, two, and four, and that's a different combination. That's a different grouping. Only by varying one factor, let alone all the other factors. So that's why we multiply them together, like that tree diagram that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So 24, choose 4. Okay, that's 1,626. And then 16, choose 3. And there we go, 560. We multiply those guys, and how many different groups of four students um, that have three computers? Uh, it ends up being, I'm not going to do it in the calculator, I don't need to, 5,950,560. That's just simple multiplication, right? You don't have to do anything crazy with that. Okay? So that's how we will go about doing multiple choices in that situation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a few sort of card examples, but I'm not going to do all of them. I'll leave all of the card examples for you to play around with and look at uh, in your notes. And if you want to know a little bit more, that's fine. But, but really the cards, it's a pretty high-end question. It's a pretty difficult question to do. Okay? All right, so, so this is poker. Uh, one thing you have to know about poker is that there's a structure to a poker deck, okay? A poker deck, oh, I should have had a handout for that. Oh, well, uh, I'll post a handout for that. Uh, a, a deck of cards has 52 cards, and it's broken up into four suits. So there's 13 hearts, right? There's 13 diamonds. At least my diamonds are better than my heart. There's 13 clubs. And then there's 13 spades, which is sort of an upside down heart with a stick. Okay, all right. And of each of those, there's the numbers 2 all the way to 10. There's a jack, there's a queen, there's a king, and there's an ace. Now, aces can sometimes stand for the number 1, but really an ace is kind of specifically um, denoted as being different, kind of like a special face card. But aces are very often considered high, and they usually are in poker. Okay, so there's no number one, but there kind of is a number one. These guys are called face cards. These cards are numbered cards. And the hearts and the diamonds are red. And the clubs and the spades are black in a standard deck of cards. Okay, so you should get to know a deck of cards. Okay, and if you don't really know about a deck of cards, you can just go online and say... <laughs> type in deck of cards, go to Google Images, print yourself out one, you know, copy and paste it on a Word file or just print it out or whatever and have it next to you somewhere while we're doing these couple of units that we're going to be doing in probability and stuff like that because it's going to be really useful. Eventually you'll get used to it. Okay, so these are just some examples. How many different poker hands, five card hands, can be called what's called a flush? Okay, now these are difficult ones. So if you don't get these, but you get all the ones that I did up to that point, maybe go... Press pause here, go and do your homework, try as many examples as you can, and then come back to these. Because these are a little bit more complex. They're not so simple. Okay, so keep that idea in mind. All right, but it's a good way for us to illustrate what's happening here. Let me leave a bit of room here to diagram this. So a flush. Now, if you don't know what a flush is, first of all, in poker, you have five cards. So you're going to be choosing five cards. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. You're going to have a hand of five cards. Okay, and a flush is all the same suit. Now, the suits are hearts, diamonds, clubs, or spades. Now a flush, doesn't matter what cards it is, as long as they're all one type of suit, as long as they're all hearts or all diamonds or all clubs or all spades, all five of them, then it's called a flush, which is a somewhat powerful hand. Okay, so what we do is we break them up according to suits. So 13 hearts, I'll just put an H for hearts, uh, a, C, a D for diamonds, uh, 13 C for clubs, and 13 uh, uh, what do I have? Spades. S for spades. Okay? And we're going to have all five of them come from one. Okay? So, my number here is going to be a choose. Okay? And it's going to be 13 because I have to choose. I know this is not how the cards are dealt out, but you know how it turned out. You want to find out the probability of it. So, you got to count how many ways it is that you could actually get this scenario here. So, to get 13 of those cards, and you're going to choose five of those. So, for the hearts, 13 choose five. Okay, that's for all the hearts. Okay? For all the diamonds, that's for hearts. For all the diamonds, it's also a 13 choose 5. Okay, but this would be a different scenario, right? Like, I couldn't choose 5 and then choose 5. I can only have 5 cards. So, this is like an or... Oops, oh, sorry, I did plus. So, we could have hearts, all hearts, or all diamonds, or 
all clubs or all spades. Now I'm going to end up erasing this, but what we're going to do is add these because I have a shortcut for it. Okay. So hopefully you understand the 13 choose five. I have 13 from each suit that I have to choose from, and I'm choosing five of them for my card hand. Now, rather than doing, you know, hearts and then diamonds and then clubs and then, or sorry, hearts or diamonds or clubs or spades and then adding them all up, what I'm going to do just to be lazy is to think of it a little bit more quickly. Okay, but there's nothing wrong with what I did there. It's just I need room over here. Okay, so anyway, so for hearts, then what I do is I say to myself, okay, well, there's going to be four ways in which I could do that. Okay, if it's 13 choose five, it could be 13 choose five from the hearts or 13 choose five from the from the uh, diamonds, 13 choose five from the clubs, 13 choose five from the spades. So it's just four, or in essence, if you want to, four choose one, and here you're choosing your suit, and here you're choosing your cards. Okay, either way, it ends up being 13 choose five times four, which ends up being, oh, I didn't even do it in my, my solution, uh, 13. In many cases, when I'm marking this, I don't even look to see what the number is uh, unless it's past the first page where you do your basic stuff. I just kind of look at it, okay? Uh, that's 1287. And uh, if the setup is up to here, I'm like, they're fine. Okay, because, you know, I, I don't really care that much that you know how to crunch the numbers in the calculator. I mean, I guess I should a little bit, but, but being able to figure this out on your own. So there's 5,148 different flushes that you could have. Because remember, you could have the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, the 6, and the 7. Or you could have the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, the 6, and the 8, or whatever. Okay? So that's another scenario there. Okay? Now, um, when we're doing these, uh, I'm going to pick some selected ones to show you for sure in this video. And then other ones... Um, you have to be a bit more specific about and you can go ahead and look them all up if you want to Okay That being the case um, I've got this at least scenario rather than a pair and so on and so forth uh, One of the easy ones that we can do is four of a kind. Okay four of a kind the way that works Okay, is that there's four cards Okay, there's there's let's say jacks. There's four jacks Okay, there's a jack of hearts jack of diamonds jack of clubs jack of spades there's four hearts that are left over. I'm oh, sorry, four uh, jacks that are that are possible. Okay, so four of a kind means you have all of those. Okay, which is a somewhat rare scenario. Okay, so what that means is, let's say you have I don't know um, four of a particular kind. Let's say it's jacks, like we, the example that we're using. We're taking five cards, so there's four jacks. We're going to have to take all four of those guys. Now the problem that I run into is, well, I need five cards, and I only have so I could go four. There's four jacks, and I'm choosing four of them, all four of them, okay? In case you're wondering, four choose four is the number one. There's only one way to choose all the cards and to have them all in your hand. I know you can arrange them differently, but again, arrange them. This is a hand. You can arrange them however you want, you want to arrange them. It's like a collection, a card hand, okay? But what's important is all the different ways in which I can do that. Well, remember that we have jacks and queens and kings and aces and twos and threes and fours all the way to tens. So we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, king, ace. So there's 13 of those. Okay, so there's 13 different hands. It's not just going to be jacks. There's going to be 13 of these guys that it could be. It could either be all jacks, all clubs, all whatever. Okay, so then what I would do is I would say, okay, well, how many different types of four of a kind could I have? Well, there's 13 different types. Okay, and then what do I do? Well, I have another card. Okay, I have to get another card. All right, it's a five-card hand. So what can that card be? Well, I need to choose one more. Okay, so who's left over here? Well, who's left over from these four? Well, there's 52 cards. That means there's 48 other cards that are kind of junk left over. Okay, and so I need one of those. I don't care which one it is. Okay, so it's 48. Choose one. I take one of those, and there you go. Okay, so how many different types of, of these different outcomes are there? Well, there's not that many. One times 13 times 48. There's only 624 four of a kinds that you can get. And that's it. So it's fairly rare. It's much more rare to get four of a kind than it is to get a flush. Okay? Now another one that I like, um, that's also easy for us to do, okay, is the idea of this um, this, this thing we call a full house, okay? And a full house is a little bit trickier, but not that much. Really what it is, is it's three of a kind and two of a kind. <clears throat> so you get three of one card, let's say jacks, and two of another card, let's say twos, 
Okay, so you two twos and, and, and three jacks. So then what you do is you have from group number one and group number two, you're going to form a group of five. And from group number one, you know it's going to be from a set of four cards. We don't know which one it's going to be, but in this case, we're saying uh, maybe this is the twos. Okay, and we're going to choose three of those guys. Okay, so that's pretty simple. It's four cards, and I'm choosing three. You know, let's say it's four twos. There's four twos, two of hearts, two of diamonds, two of clubs, two of spades, and I'm choosing three of those. Okay, so four choose three. Easy. Um, so this is uh, the twos. Okay, and... I'm going to be choosing also, uh, uh, from another group of four, I'm going to be taking two of those guys from another group of four. Okay? And let's say that's jacks. Okay? So we'll call them J's. And then it's four, taking from, from a group of four, and we're taking two of them. So choose two. Now, because we're doing this and this, we multiply the two of them together. Okay, because we're choosing three cards and, and two cards. But we also have to think about the number of types of these. Well, how many three of a kinds can I have? Well, there's 13 three of a kinds that are out there, right? You could have all twos, like we had here. You could have all three, sorry, three twos, three threes, three fours, three fives, three sixes, three sevens, three eights, three nines, three tens, three jacks, three que uh, queens, three kings, and three aces. So there's 13 of those guys. But if I take a three of a kind, I can also take a two of a kind from that same one, okay? Because there's only four of a type. So this, this choose that you have to take, to take from has to be from a different group. So if there's 13, if I choose twos here, that means I have one less to choose for the, for the pair that exists. So then I have to multiply that by 12, okay? So these are your pairs. These are your three of a kinds, three of, okay, I'm just going to go K for kinds. Oh, no, I should put K, I, and D, because kinds can look like kings. But for three of a kinds, and then this is the pick particular one. So this is your, your uh, pair, and this is your three of a kind, and these are the types. And these are the types. It's a pretty complicated scenario here. But what you end up with is four choose three, which is four. Four choose two, which is six and then 13, and then 12. So you go 4 times 6 times 13 times 12 equals 3,744. Okay? Now, if you can get those ones and you can understand those ones, it means you are in awesome shape. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain these ones already set out for me rather than do them for you. It'll shorten the video and more importantly, it'll sort of allow you to kind of see it and then maybe try it yourself or whatever. Try these ones if you can figure them out on your own. That'd be awesome. But they do get a little bit tricky. Okay, so let's have a look at, for example, uh, let's do a three of a kind. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here and kind of focus on this. So at least three of a kind. Now that means this. Uh, from whatever type it is, let's say it's, I don't know, jacks. Okay, let's say it's jacks. All right, from whatever type it is, I'm going to take four jacks and I'm going to choose three of them. That's what three of a kind is. Four jacks, choose three. Okay, so four choose three, that's the four choose three there. No problem, three of a kind, easy. Okay, now how many different three of a kinds do I have? Well, there's jacks, right? Um, or you could have twos or threes or fours or fives or sixes or sevens or eights or nines or tens or jacks or queens or kings or aces. So there's 13 of those, so I multiply it by 13. Okay, and hopefully you can see that there. So 4 choose 3, and then multiply by 13. Okay, but then I still have, remember, I chose 3 cards only. I need 2 more cards to make my, my hand a 5. That's the reason why I see at least 3 of a kind. Because if I choose 3 cards, then that means from 52, okay, there's 52 in total. From 52, I take away 3, and I get 49. If I take 49, then I go 49 choose 2. I need two more cards. I have 49 cards left over. I'm going to choose two of them. Now, what's interesting and the reason why it's called at least three of a kind is you could actually have a jack and throw it in there. Okay? You could have a jack and throw it in there as well, which would make it a four of a kind. Okay? That's why I say at least three of a kind because a four of a kind is a special type of at least three of a kind. Okay? And that's what makes it a little trickier. Now, later on, I do a different combination. It's going to help you out with it a little bit better. 
Okay, so that's at least three of a kind. Okay, now we're going to look at at least a pair, which is maybe easier, maybe harder, I don't know. Whole point is here. Okay, so we've got, let's say jacks again. Oh, no, in this case we have twos. So let's say it's the, it's the, the card twos. Okay, we're going to choose two of those guys. So four choose two. That's, a, that's my pair. Two of the same type. Okay, remember that, of course, I have 13 different types of pairs I could get. Okay, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, the nine, the ten, the jack, the queen, the king, and the ace. Okay, so there's 13. So four choose two times 13. Those are all the pairs I can get. But remember, you have to pick the leftover cards. And there's three leftover cards. Well, if you take out two from 52, then that means that you have 50 left over. If you take three more of those, that's 50 choose three. Okay, now, that's at least a pair because... It could be a pair, but if you choose one of these cards, is it, let's say these are these are two twos. Let's say you choose another two, then that's going to be a three of a kind. Let's say you choose another uh, another two, two twos, then that's going to be four of a kind. Or you could have three of a kind and have yourself a full house if you want to as well. So that's why I do at least. It's a little bit easier to do at least. Here I'm going to do one example of exactly a pair and only a pair. After that, you have to start doing some subtracting craziness that goes along with that. And then card hands get to be really, really crazy and really, really difficult to do. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose exactly a pair and only a pair. So what do I do? It's almost structured exactly the same way. So I have, let's say it's my, my pair is twos. So I take two, there's four twos. I take two of those twos, four twos, two, no problem. And then I say to myself, well, the pair doesn't have to be twos. It could be anything. It could be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, ace. So there's 13 of those. So that's my pair. That's no problem. That's my pair, choosing a pair, and that's my number of types of pairs. Then what I have here is notice, instead of going, um, taking my 52 cards and taking away the two that I take out, I'm going to take the 52 cards and I'm going to remove all of the possible twos from here. So now there's only 48 cards that are left. So I take away this whole four because I don't want any extra twos to get thrown in there. Okay, and I have these 48. Now technically this is not a pair and only a pair because it could be a full house. Okay, if I take these 48, I could take three of a kind when I take these three. I should put a three here. Three of a kind when I take these three. Oops. That should be 48 shoes three. Okay, all the cards left except those that make a pair. Now what I would have to do after this is I would have to subtract my three of a kind. Okay, you don't have to worry about your four of a kind because you're only taking three cards. Okay, and they're not going to be the same ones as these, but you should subtract your three of a kind. Okay, you all should, su should subtract your full houses. Okay, and that's where it starts to get really crazy. So if you can do a flush, if you can do four of a kind, and you can do a full house, you are in great shape. Now, your homework uh, is going to be on page 279, okay, and it's going to be these particular questions. So this is actually the appropriate homework that you should have, okay? All right, so get to work on that and have fun.